Good morning to you and welcome into traditional worship here at Forest Park United Methodist Church. We are delighted to have you with us today. Whether you are in the sanctuary or whether you are watching online, we extend warm Christian greetings to you. My name is David Willis. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park. And just a couple of announcements before we move into worship this morning. If you are here in the sanctuary, please be sure that you disconnect your connection card that is on your bulletin and drop those in the offering plate as they come around. They are pretty self-explanatory. If you don't make the offering plate, you can drop it in one of the white baskets that you see by the doors. If you're watching online and you think, I would love to have a bulletin, you can get one. Go to our webpage, fpumc.org, and uh, navigate toward the bottom of that page. You'll see a link that you can click on that will take you to uh, one of our bulletins. You can uh, download that, print it out, or just look at it on your desktop, your laptop, or your phone. Or you may download our church app. You can search for that in your store, and uh, when you find it there and you download it on your smartphone, you will have not only access to our bulletin, but a whole bunch of different things going on here at the church. A couple of moments now to look at the announcements that are in your bulletin. I will not go over each of these in detail. I will depend upon you to read them. The student ministry is going strong. We've got a fall retreat for our uh, students October 7th through the 9th. It's going to be a weekend of uh, fun worship and uh, intentional conversation on identity, who we are in Christ, young adult ministry, men's ministry. Women's ministry is back in full swing. Uh, we have worship collective that's going to meet tonight at 6.30 in uh, First United Methodist Church uh, down in their youth room on 4th Street here in Panama City. And school supplies for Nigerian children. Miss Esther is uh, getting help from the single, with help from the single adult Sunday school class. They are collecting school supplies for 225 Nigerian children. She would appreciate your help in pur purchasing the needed supplies. There's a collection box, and it's located in the fellowship hall. As you walk out the sanctuary, straight across the church into the fellowship hall, you will see it there. And there's a list of things that they need. Uh, also, uh, there at the back of your bulletin, you will see a record of our faithfulness. I want to let you know, too, that we have a garage sale coming up here at the church, October 28th and 29th from 7 to 11. Children's ministry, again, going strong in need of volunteers. Senior adults, coffee, coloring, and chit-chat. And uh, 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 going to be eating at Alice's by the Bay Thursday, September 29th. Paula needs a head count there. Please be sure that you are SVP. And it looks like this Wednesday, we've got lasagna, tall salad, and garlic knots, and it says Mary's Cannoli. So uh, be here for Mary's Cannoli and the lasagna, and join us Wednesday night for a time of fellowship and a midweek pick-me-up. Thank you again for being with us this morning. Let's take some time now to pray before we move into worship. Bow with me. Almighty God, as we stand in awe of your goodness and your mercy this day, we invite you to be present amongst us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we declare that we love you and we thank you that you have made the way of love known through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would reveal this great love to uh, all of us this day as we gather here to worship. Lead us by that Holy Spirit to praise you, and may our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and our mouths proclaim your everlasting greatness. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
stand and join in singing praise to our God. God of grace and God of glory is the hymn. We invite you to stand and sing along. Let's take time now to pause and join together in the recitation of our Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. with kindness. Come join us. Many people from strong nations will come to Jerusalem to worship me and to ask me to treat them with kindness. When this happens, ten people from nations with different languages will grab a Jew by his clothes and say, let us go with you. We've heard that God is on your side. I, the Lord, all-powerful, have spoken. 
Blessed is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gene. Let's take time to pray together once more. Bow with me. Our gracious and loving God, in the morning, when we rise, and in the evening, when we lie down, in all the moments of our day in between, we, we believe that you're with us and that your love never fails us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your eternal presence and your gracious care that follows us throughout all of our lives. Today, we especially thank you for your steadfast love, which always holds us and always walks beside us. Grant us the strength of faith to, to hold on and, and to believe. Even when our way seems unclear and, and even when our circumstances seem confusing and overwhelming, Father, like Peter, James, and John, help us to climb onto the mountain to experience you in all of your majesty and your glory. And then to come down from the mountain to, to live out our lives of, of faith and, and care and compassion, our lives of service and our lives of love. We pray today for those who are ill, for those in our congregation who are grieving, for those who are frightened, for those who are discouraged, for those who are disenfranchised and depressed, for those who are weary and those who are tired. We pray, Father, that your hand would rest with these, with your healing power, and that you would boost them, Father, heal them through the power of your hope. Bless as well the caregivers and their loved ones. Bless their friends who reach out to them with help, encouragement, and support. Help us to remember that this is the way that we become your hands and your feet. Be with us, Heavenly Father, as we seek to be a community, to be a church where all are welcomed and where all are valued, where all are celebrated for the talents offered and for the gifts volunteered. God, we know that we are created to be in relationship with one another. In order to be a whole and functioning body, we must be together. May we be and may we more and more become that sacred body here where we intend to shine a, a beacon of your love and your hope from this place to the whole community that surrounds us and even to our world. Dear God, let us be conscious of those we love and grateful for those who love us and help us to remember that you are the power and the hope of all souls who love you and the strength of those who seek to serve you. Father, bless our country and spark revival here, for it is here that revival will pour into the rest of the world. God, I pray that your continued blessings would rest with our first responders, with our United States military, and with those who are appointed or elected to lead us. And Father, enable all of us this week to see not with our eyes, but to see with a heart of, with a heart of faith and to live and to walk by trust. And Father, as we do this week, every week, at this time we ask that you teach us, teach us to pray just as you taught your disciples when you told them to say this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Often wonder about this next hymn. I love to tell the story about what was going through the mind of the person who wrote this song when they wrote it. You know, telling the story is something that we do by the way we live, by the way we act, by how we interact with other people, how we live our lives is how we tell this great story. I invite you to stand. Let's sing that old song together. ushers come forward this morning. Let's take time to worship through our offerings and our tithes. Bow with me as we pray together once more. Gracious and loving Father, giver of life and our source of um, true freedom. We know that all we have, uh, all that we have received is from your hand. You call us to be 
best stewards of your abundance. You call us to be the best caretakers of, of all that you've given to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely and teach us to share them with generosity. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ that lives within our lives. As we give to you today, may you bless the gift and bless the giver that your work may be completed in this place. We offer this prayer earnestly in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated.
as we have become accustomed to, a great job by the hymn team. All the voices, all the keys, notes, just exactly right. Thank you to them. Thank you also to our um, uh, tech team that makes all these good things happen so that we can hear it, so that we can see it. And thank you to you for taking time out of your week to come and spend uh, just a bit of time with us so that, that we can kind of get a revival for the week, right? Because we know what the week holds, and it's not always good things, is it? Sometimes the week wants to beat up on us a little bit, and we need that, that, that infusion of the Spirit of God. And, and today is precisely what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how the Spirit enables us to, to do what we have been called to do. And what we have been called to do is to be the church for the entire world. We've been talking about moving from the inside of the church to the outside. How it is that we are on mission not only in the church but in our community and in the world. And, and today we're going to be focusing on, on how it is that, that we move from just being uh, the church on the corner to being the church to the world. And uh, sometimes that can seem daunting. Sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating, but today we're going to discover how that is possible. Most of you know, as uh, you've seen me do this before, either in this service or in the second service, but some of you aren't that familiar with it. The kids uh, in the second service bring down every week a, a little bag, and it is um, a sandwich bag a lunch bag, whatever you want to call it. It's a paper bag that you can't see through. And as most of you know, the kids can put anything they want to put in that bag. All right? They have two rules when it comes to that. They can't put anything living in that bag, and they can't put anything dead in that bag. But whatever else they want to put in that bag, they can put in there. And sometimes you get the old sneaking feeling that it's probably the parents that pack the bag just um, going off of what I take out of the bag. So when they bring it down, I don't know what's in there. I have to take it out of the bag, and I have to uh, uh, make a spiritual application with it for the kids. Now, what a lot of you don't know is I do the same exact thing throughout the week for the kids over in our FP Learning Center. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have uh, an, what I call an expanded Mother's Morning Out uh, Mother's Morning Out on steroids, if you will. From 9 a.m. until noon, we get kids together uh, age in age range from, I guess, maybe two all the way up to about four, uh, maybe five in some cases. And, and they uh, have their little activities, uh, Miss Mo and Miss Vicky and uh, Miss Mary. Uh, all the people come together, and we work with the kids to to help them get ready to, to move up, to go to kindergarten, get ready to go to first grade and do all of those things. Well, uh, those three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I take about 10 minutes and I go in with those kids and I do the same exact thing with them. They pack a little bag and I take it out and uh, make a very simple spiritual application with it. And then I read a little bit to them and just so they can know who I am. And uh, actually that particular program has really become the number one way that people are coming into the church now. Uh, that's the number one way that we are gaining kids in our children's program. And it's the number one way that we are gaining new families here at the church. So as we look at it from a demographic standpoint, it's very, very um, productive and very uh, useful for us here at the church because it helps us to do what we're talking about, moving outside the walls of the church and being for the community what the community needs. So last week... As I was doing my thing, I went in and spent some time with the kids. And as I reached into the bag, I had an idea of what was in the bag. And I pulled it out, and it was a little thing of Play-Doh, right? And it was in the traditional Play-Doh container, the red top, the yellow bottom, Play-Doh on it. And I asked the kids when I held it up, hey, what is this? And they all said, Play-Doh. And I said, what's inside of it? And they said, Play-Doh. And I said, well, how do you know? And they said, because that's what the container is. And so we had a little discussion about what something looks like and what it actually is. So we talked a little bit about how we dress. 
We talked a little bit about how we comb our hair, how we brush our teeth, and, and how that really doesn't affect who we are on the inside. Sometimes there are people who don't look like we look. Sometimes there are people who don't dress like we dress, and yet they're still the same on the inside. Sometimes even those people who don't look like we look, who maybe they smell differently, have different colored skin, maybe there are people that we run into that don't have as much money or as much food as we do, they are still good on the inside, just like we are good on the inside. So what counts is what we know from David, right? King David, when King David was uh, to be anointed as the king, uh, he sent uh, Samuel to anoint King David, and he didn't know who he was supposed to pick. You remember that story? He was going to look at Jesse's sons, and so he looked at all of them, and he picked out the best-looking one, basically, and said, surely this is the one, and God said, nope, this is not him, and here's the reason why. Because you're looking at the outside, but God looks at the inside. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. So the kids learned that even though I popped the top on the Play-Doh, and sure enough, there was Play-Doh inside there, it's not always like that with us. And it's the same with you. It's the same with me. Even though we look a certain way on the outside, sometimes we are overflowing with what we should be overflowing with. Sometimes we are overflowing of what we shouldn't be overflowing with. And sometimes we are completely and totally empty. We put on that happy face, just like they sang about in the song, People walking by, we know what they look like, but we're not really sure what's on the inside. We don't know what they're battling with. Sometimes we look one way, and on the inside, we are another way all together. Today, we're going to talk about how it is that God can take people like that, people like me and you, who get ourselves up, get ourselves dressed, get ourselves ready, move into the world, and, and even though we may look one way, we may feel another, how it is that people can bring a, or how it is that God can bring a disjointed people like that together and solve the issue at hand. And the issue at hand is how the church is the church, not just in the church, not just in our community. Remember what we said last week? When we define community, we weren't defining community by a geographical. We're talking about our community, the people that we come into contact with on a regular basis. How we are not just the church to the, our community, but how we're the church to the world. In the first sermon in this series, we talked a little bit about maybe even being fearful that God is going to call us to, to go to Africa. Certainly, he's still issuing that call. But for you and for me, for us together, there may come a point in time where he asks us to participate in missions that move outside the scope of our church and our community and that expand into the world, and we have to be ready for that call. So how does he expect us to do that? In your Bibles today, in the book of Acts chapter 1, we started out this sermon series in Acts chapter 2, and we end this series up in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, we're going to read the story of the ascension of Christ into heaven after he has been resurrected. So Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9 is what we're going to be homing in on today. We have to remember this, that as we discovered the first week we were together, that the book of Luke and the book of Acts is one work. Remember that, just a reminder there, they're, they're one work. Uh, and you'll see that Luke the physician continues his writing here. He says, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Now let me paint for you a picture of what's going on. 
Jesus has been betrayed, he has been crucified, he has died, and he has been resurrected in his resurrection body. Luke tells us that for a period of 40 days, Jesus appeared to those around and near to him to help them be set up for exactly what it is that he needed them to do. And just before he is to ascend back into heaven, he gathers his apostles together and he begins to charge them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4 says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth after he said this he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight in week one we talked about God's initiative in you and in me sometimes we get freaked out when we think about mission work because we think that it all depends upon us well it doesn't your drive and my drive to serve your drive and my drive to help people understand Jesus the way that we do. Your drive, even if you're pre-Christian, even if you're listening and you haven't felt that call yet, your drive, that emptiness that you feel, feel in your life that can't be filled with anything else, that is God's initiative. That is God's grace working on me and on you. Today we're going to talk about what that initiative eventually results in. And what that initiative eventually results in is exactly what Jesus promised his apostles. That there was a time coming when they too would receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So you can take a deep breath and relax this morning. You can exhale and know that everything is going to be okay. While you may be called to participate in foreign missions, God does not need everybody to go to Africa. All right? So this everybody can include you. You may not be called to a foreign mission field. You may be called to a foreign mission field on a very short mission trip. Or you may be called to work on this side of a foreign mission field in a very different way. The issue is not necessarily whether or not you will be called. The issue becomes how you will react and whose power will be used when you are called. Jesus stands together with his apostles and he gives them a very, very plain charge. He says, this is what I want you to do. When you receive the Holy Spirit, I want you to move out from where you are right now. You notice that before they received the Holy Spirit, what charge did he give them? Wait. Wait. Okay. You remember how it is that God answers prayers? Primarily, we have said that God answers prayer in one of three ways. God will answer your prayer by saying no. Right? Sometimes that's, that's silence. God will answer your prayer by saying, grow. Okay? We're going to continue to work on this, but maybe you need to expand a little bit before I answer this prayer. Sometimes God will answer your prayer by saying, go. Okay? Three primary ways that God answers prayer. No grow and go at this particular point in time what they are wondering about what they are asking about is still off the mark of what God needs them to understand they are interested in knowing whether or not Jesus is about to restore the kingdom that he's been talking about and Jesus says hold up 
you're not quite there yet. What you need to understand is that what you need to do, what I need you to do, is not here. It's going to come, though. John the Baptist said that he baptized you in one way, and he told you that I was going to baptize you in another way, and I'm about to baptize you in another way, but it's not mine to give, it's the Father's to give, so just hold on, so you just stay right here. So essentially, what's he telling them? Know what you think about to hap- is about to happen isn't. I need you to grow a little bit. And furthermore, most importantly, I'm going to help you grow. This is one thing that is essential for us as followers of Jesus Christ to know and to understand. God is not going to ask you to do something that he does not equip you to do. The truth is, sometimes when he asks us to do something and we're not equipped to do it, he may gently push us down the trail and equip us as we go. How many of you have uh, kids, grandkids? Got kids, got grandkids? How many of them played or play or still are playing video games? And you've seen them play those before. Oh, man. That is all my kids did when they grew up. And, you know, you'd have to force them out the door. And then, of course, there were those games that that I would see them play. And I would think, well, that looks pretty cool. And and I would play with them. And uh, (laughs) the truth is, uh, as you, uh, on some of those games, as you move out from what they call your spawn point, where your character is either brought to life or brought back to life after you have a an unfortunate incident that happens in the game you move out and generally on the way you're going to get injured you're going to get hurt you're going to get hungry you're going to uh, something bad is going to happen you're going to need more ammo and as you're on your way there will be these little things that you can pick up there will be a little medical kit or if you're not into those violent games, if, if you're driving around in Mario Kart, you know, there'll be something that you can run over and get a little bit of extra power or whatever. On the path, there is what you need to get you through. God is going to call you to move out from your place of comfort to do something. And though he may not equip you to do it right where you are immediately, on the way, he will equip you. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had a lot of response to these sermons that I've been preaching. And some of the response that I've gotten is this. I am um, X, Y, or Z. Okay, said in a number of ways. I, and the gist of it is, I am not able. Okay, I'm not able financially. I'm not able physically. I'm not able mentally. How is it that I'm supposed to respond to this series of sermons? And I give that deeply theological answer. I don't know. (laughs) I, I don't know. I mean, that's between you and God. Just because you are something or just because you're not something does not exempt you from the call. So it's yours to delve into your prayer life and figure that out. I mean, there's a point in time where we all have to understand that though I'm the pastor, I am still in the same boat with you. I am still in relationship to God just like you are, and there are some things that I can guide you in, but I can't make the decision for you. There is something that is intensely personal about our relationship with God. And there are some things that though you can receive guidance in them, to get the answer that you need, you're going to have to delve deeper into your relationship. The rub there is, you can choose to do that or not. And if you choose not to do it, I don't want to hear you whining about it, okay? It's like I used to tell my kids, you know what, what, did you do that? Yeah, I did that. Well, what do you expect? Okay, here's the thing. When I say I don't want to hear you whining about it, do you have any trouble? Obviously, you know, especially in your trouble with God, I want to help you with that. I want to move you along. But there comes a point in time when even the preacher, even the the bishop, even the pope can't help you through your own blatant disobedience. 
for me and for you stepping outside the walls of the church and doing what God has asked us to do will enable you and me to overcome any physical, mental, or financial limitation that we have. In other words, I've gone around my elbow to tell you that God is not going to ask you to do something that he's not going to help you to do. Okay. If you feel a sense that you need to get up off the couch, if you feel a sense that you need to open up your checkbook, if you feel a sense that you need to uh, jot a note, God is going to allow that to happen. Bare minimum. What you can do is offer earnest prayer. For me, for the church, for you, for your mission focus, whatever that may be, offer fervent, earnest, and frequent prayer. That's the bare minimum. So when we talk about what God is doing here through Jesus, he's telling his apostles, hey, something is about to happen, and I'm going to ask you to step up your game. The difference here is that he tells them, when the power comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit fills you, you're going to have to step out from the place where you're most comfortable, Jerusalem. Okay, you're, you're most comfortable in Jerusalem. That's like saying to me, you're going to have to step outside the church. And he tells him, not only are you going to have to step outside the church, you're going to have to step outside Judea. You might even, he says to me, and you have to get out of Panama City. And he tells them, I'm going to need you to go to Samaria, i.e. to me and you. That means I might even ask you to go to a place somewhere uh, where you're not comfortable. Would the apostles have been comfortable in Samaria? Mm -mm. Nope. What's in Samaria? More than the good Samaritan. What's in Samaria? People who are basically half Philistine and half Jew. So they're a little mixed up. They're not real happy with the secular world. They're not real happy with the Jewish world. They're a little sensitive. And Jesus then issues the final de decree and to the ends of the earth. Somehow, some way, I'm going to need you to do what you do in a way that affects even places that, that you've never heard of. And that's the call for you and for me. The beauty there, though, is where I end today. The beauty there is that God never leaves you with an empty bag. God never issues a call before it is time for him to issue that call. In other words, God is not going to ask you to do something. God is not going to ask me to do something unless the timing is right and he is ready to give you what you need to make it happen. Well, how do you know? Because of the way he operated with the apostles. Did he tell them get up and go to uh, uh, leave Jerusalem, go to Judea, go to Samaria, go to the ends of the earth right now. No. What did he say to them? He said, you wait until the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Timing. 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 You wait until the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Provision, provision, provision. This is what I need you to do. This is when I need you to do it. And this is the power that you're going to use to make it happen. He didn't tell them how. He didn't even give them a specific geographic region. He said, outside of where you're comfortable is where this is going to take place. For me and for you, identifying where we're comfortable sometimes means that we have to do a little bit of introspection. 
I'm comfortable in X, Y, Z. Do, do you realize that sometimes stepping out of where you're comfortable can be as close as your cubicle at work? Sometimes stepping out of where you're comfortable doesn't have to be overseas. Sometimes stepping out of where you're comfortable can be as close as your next door neighbor. God has the timing. God makes the provision for you, for me, to step outside our comfort zone and do what needs to be done, even unto the ends of the earth. Numbers of ways that you can do that beyond the borders of the United States. Emerald Coast Missions, it's a great, great way for you to reach out and work. A great, great place. I, I'm assuming you guys are going to back to Honduras at some point. A great place for you to hook up on a short-term mission trip if you're physically able. A great place for you if you're not physically able, if you're financially able, to find someone who is physically able but not financially able to help them go. Esther Orgy is literally collecting school supplies to send to Nigeria for kids that don't have. You, you want to step outside the border of the United States? You want to step outside the border of the United States? There are countless ways that you can do this. It doesn't have to be getting inoculated, getting a plane ticket, and going somewhere that you're not comfortable with. But the call is the same. The call is exactly what Jesus issued to the apostles. Go into the world and do what I've asked you to do. The time is now. The power lives inside of you. Act. Act. Pray with me. There's no, um, there's no mistaking the call. There's no mistaking, Father, what you have asked us to do and that you have used the power of your Holy Spirit and you have used the mouth of your Son, Jesus Christ, to issue that call. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Ju Ju Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Um, there's no stuttering there. There's no issue with the conjugation of verbs and adverbs. There's no difficulty with the subject matter at hand. There is the clear call for us to influence the world because of what you have done for us. There is a call for us through the power that you provide to be your presence and for us to realize that you call each person differently. So many people take guilt away from messages like this. It's, it's not about guilt, Father. You know this. This is a message from you to us that allows us to participate in your kingdom. It is a literal draw into a deeper relationship with you so that we may know and that we may feel your power at work within us. Help us to realize this and most importantly, help us to act. We love you and we trust you with this, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Friends, the altar is open. As we stand together and close out worship with one last song, you may come forward and pray if you feel the need to do so. Stand together.
Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we pray that this time together has been a blessing to you as you depart, receive this benediction. Go now with the peace of God living within you, so much so that you desire to share that peace of God with the world. Let his love spill out of you, and let this happen, that he may be glorified, that you may be revived, and that in all things his will would be done. Take this into the world now. In his name, amen. Thank you for coming. We are one in the spirit. Bless you and go in peace. Have a beautiful and a blessed day.